Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh's assassination is being celebrated across Israel, who still remains tight-lipped on the next course of action. But what really will be the repercussions of this massive killing and will there be a retaliation? Well, Israel has yet to make a comment on Haniyeh's killing, but in its statement, Hamas accused Israel of the attack. The Hamas statement says that the group mourned Hanye, who quote-unquote died as a result of a treacherous Zionist raid on his residence in Tehran after he was participating in the inauguration ceremony of the new Iranian president. Although Israel has not formally commented, several Israeli ministers have reacted to Hanye's assassination celebrating his killing. Hanye's death underscores the significant role and activities of Iran's axis of resistance. This is a network of allied militias in the Middle East which presents a formidable threat to Israel. Now, the United States had cautioned Israel about escalation with the Iranian-backed Hezbollah as Israel weighed its response to a rocket attack from Lebanon which killed 12 youths in the Israel-controlled Golan Heights. That attack sparked concerns about a wider regional conflict even as Hezbollah in a rare move had denied having any role in it. But cross-border fighting between Israel and Hezbollah has occurred almost daily since the war with Hamas in Gaza began in October. On Monday, Israeli strikes killed two people on a motorcycle and then injured three others in southern Lebanon. Hania's killing comes after Israel struck a Hezbollah stronghold in southern Beirut, killing a senior commander of the Iran-backed group, saying that it was responsible for a weekend rocket attack on the Israel-annexed Golan Heights. Now amid fears of an escalation, a senior Hamas official has said that the killing of the Palestinian movement's chief Ismail Haniyeh, quote-unquote, will not go unanswered and was a cowardly act. Lebanon's armed group Hezbollah has also issued its condolences. This after Hamas chief Ismail Haniyeh was killed overnight in Tehran. Hezbollah did not really specifically accuse Israel, but has said that it will make Iran-aligned groups more determined to confront Israel. In fact, according to a New York Times correspondent, Iranian officials are in absolute shock over the recent assassination of Hanye. This attack also delivers a huge blow to Iran's security reputation at a time that it wants to project power in the region. In fact, this axis of resistance, which is a proclaimed network of Iran-sponsored organizations and militias across Middle East, aims at expanding Iranian influence and resisting Western presence. In the wake of Hanye's assassination, the prospects for a ceasefire also looks grim. In fact, only recently, the US President Joe Biden had urged Hamas to accept Israeli plan for a Gaza ceasefire. The US President outlined a deal that would offer permanent ceasefire and Israeli withdrawal for hostage release and rebuilding efforts. In fact, Joe Biden said that the first phase of the peace plan would last for six weeks, during which there would be a ceasefire and a withdrawal of Israeli forces, especially from all populated areas of Gaza. But Benjamin Netanyahu has been less than enthusiastic to embrace this peace proposal. Hanye was a political figure and a very pragmatic one. In fact, he was known for maintaining good relations with Palestinian leaders from every faction, a reason why there has been such a rush of expression of solidarity. Decades running the militant group's political operations from exile and also emerging as one of its most visible leaders during the war with Israel and Gaza. Anir was born in a refugee camp just near Gaza City and he joined Hamas in the late 1980s during the first intifada or uprising. Though regarded as Hamas's leader in Gaza for several years, he didn't really become the group's overall political leader until 2017. He was then named a specially designated global terrorist by the United States, which came during a period of tension between Washington and the Palestinians due to the decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. A decision that was made by the former US President Donald Trump. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas has released a statement saying that he strongly condemns the recent attack, calling it cowardly and a dangerous development. One would expect that hardliners in Hamas will now be in a better position to dictate its agenda. This assassination attack has been condemned by Turkey and Russia as well, with Ankara labeling it as heinous and Moscow calling it, quote unquote, an absolutely unacceptable political murder. But all eyes will now be on Iran and how will it respond to the latest development and will this lead to a regional escalation? Iran-Israel tensions have also escalated since the war on Gaza. When an Israeli missile hit Iran, the attack was widely seen as its response to Iran's missile and drone attack on Israel. 
Iran's own direct attack on Israel, its first ever, was in turn retaliation for an Israeli strike on the Iranian consulate in the Syrian capital Damascus, which had killed senior military commanders. So why are Israel and Iran enemies? Well, earlier on, Israel and Iran had been engaged in a years-long shadow war attacking each other's assets without really admitting responsibility. Those attacks increased considerably during the current war in Gaza, which was sparked by the Palestinian group Hamas's assault on nearby Israeli communities last October. These two nations were allies until the 1979 Islamic Revolution in Iran, which had brought in a regime that was used opposing Israel as a key part of its ideology. Iran, in fact, does not really recognize Israel's right to exist and even seeks its eradication. The country's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, had previously called Israel, quote-unquote, a cancerous tumor that will undoubtedly be uprooted and destroyed. Israel believes, meanwhile, that Iran poses an existential threat as evidenced by Tehran's rhetoric, its build-up of proxy forces in the region, including the Lebanese Shia militant group Hezbollah, that are sworn to Israel's destruction. Hania's death just might shift the dynamics within the axis of resistance, but the future of the Middle East stability and the power dynamics will also depend on how Iran and its proxies will navigate this huge loss and the ongoing regional conflicts.